Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshina, thank you for being here. I'm gonna be sharing all of the books that I read in June. I was doing kind of a mood reading June thing where I set like a small TBR at the beginning of the month. I'll link it down below if you wanna watch it. And I kind of said I wanted to read like, I think there was like four books in that video. And then I left it wide open for whatever I wanted to pick up the rest of the time. And it kind of worked in my favor just because I didn't read much past what I said I wanted to read. This month was the last month of the school year for me and so I was wrapping everything up with my class and you know doing all of the year-end activities that take a lot of time. And I was very drained and just exhausted every day so I didn't really read that much. But I did read some amazing books that I can't wait to share and it's gonna be good. So here we go, I'm just gonna dive in. I did finally finish reading Mere Christianity. I had started reading this in May with everyone who was doing kind of the read along that Krista from Books and Gems had started. I just did not have the time to read it as fast as they were reading it, but I did end up finishing it this month and I loved it. This is a reread for me. I had read it years ago for school actually, so this was the first time I was reading it just for fun and it was so good i got a lot out of it i just think his wisdom and his insight into christianity is very useful and it's really encouraging for me so would definitely recommend this book he covers so many different topics yeah you've probably heard a lot about it but i love this book i gave it five stars it's definitely an all-time favorite so i also read no journey too far by carrie taransky this is the sequel to no ocean too wide and i actually got an arc of it an e-arc so i was very thankful for that i had gotten an arc of the first one as well so it was just cool that it worked out that i got an arc for both and yeah so this is i'm pretty sure it's the conclusion i think it's just a duology but this continues the story it's actually 10 years later i want to say from the first book um, and I actually reread the first book in May to be able to read this book in June just to have it all fresh in my mind and I loved it I really really like this story I think the way that Carrie Taransky has written this family because you follow a family it's set in the late 1800s early 1900s and this family lives in England but the children mistakenly get sent to Canada as immigrant children and they're like sold to families to, for various things and you're following the kids trying to find each other again and then get back to their home in England um, and this second book follows the story but it's 10 years in the future so you do follow basically the same characters but two of the siblings play a more prominent role in this second book and I really really enjoyed it yeah I give it four stars I think it's good I would recommend this for historical fiction and I just liked that it was a little bit more closer to home for me because it was set in Canada for some of the time not anywhere that I live but still I could like recognize you know the town names and just things they were talking about I could picture it better so I really enjoyed it and yeah thank you to the publisher for giving it to me then I tried to read one of the books that was on my TBR, and this is also my, my spring TBR. Um, it's The Printed Letter Bookshop by Catherine Rie, but I DNF'd this book because, let me just remember what it's about. Um, you follow this family, there's a death in the family, I think it's the grandma that dies, or maybe it's an aunt. No, it's a grandma. Yes. And she, there's like some kind of family scandal that there's awkwardness all throughout the whole thing and anyways I think the daughter you know gets willed the grandma's bookshop and her house I think literally the grandma leaves her everything I think that's what it is and she has to like figure out what to do yeah so you're following the girl then you're also following the two workers at the bookstore and their little story that they have um, but I just found it kind of boring didn't capture my attention. There weren't enough, like, I don't know, moments for me to get attached to. Otherwise, it just seemed like kind of a bleak situation. And I found like the two workers annoying. A bit of the family drama was interesting, but just not enough for me to continue reading the book. So yeah, I DNF'd it. I'm not gonna completely write off Catherine Rie, and I've also heard that this book isn't her best either, so I might try a different one. Um, my library has two others of hers, so I'll give those a try. But then I get to talk about some great books. Okay, so I did reread Stay With Me by Becky Wade because I wanted to read Let It Be Me, and that's what I did. So yeah, there's something about this book. I love this book. 
yeah, I, I think it's their relationship. It's just so cute. Um, yeah, so this is a reread. I bought this last year when it came out, but I wanted to reread it just to have all the characters fresh on my mind. And I, I wanted to reread it anyways, because Becky Wade is amazing, because um, then I wanted to jump into this one. So if you don't know, this follows a group of five people who, when they were young, they were on like a missions trip in Mexico, and there was a earthquake that trapped them in a building and they were trapped there for like eight days and they almost died but god literally saved them like he the building was collapsing and yet everything around them didn't collapse on top of them like he literally protected them so it's like a miracle so they're called the miracle five i think it's five and anyways so you're following one of the kids um and her kind of life from that event she became kind of like a motivational speaker and a christian writer and she's really popular among Christians. She ends up breaking her ankle and she gets addicted to oxytocin, I wanna say, some painkiller drug. And so you're dealing with that. That It's kind of the story of her like breaking her addiction. She meets a guy and also there's a mystery with her parents. Um, it is just, it's so funny and it's so real and raw but like there's it just has everything like it has really good faith moments really cute romance like really the relationship carries it for me but also like the themes of faith and stuff are amazing and i just love this story it's so captivating it's written really well and i love it so yeah what was really exciting though is i becky wade offered to send me this book so i was sent this for free by the author which i can't even believe that i can say that it's so cool um, I wanted to read it immediately, but I also was like, I want to read Stay With Me first. So that's what I did, and then I read this one. And I talked a little bit about this one in my last video, but I loved this book <laughs> because the new character that you're following is named Leah, um, and then her love interest is, well, I mean, you basically know. It's kind of a love triangle at the beginning. And I was so like, how is this gonna work out? You know, cause like, it's a pretty typical love triangle situation where she doesn't have a preference, but the two guys are best friends and they both like her. So like, how do you, who gets her, you know? <laughs> Who's gonna give it up? So that was a little bit of a mystery for me at the beginning, so I don't wanna spoil it. Um, Anyways, the two guys that like her are were both in the earthquake together, so that's how their relationship is there. And and Leah's just kind of a random person in this town that you end up following too. Um, but she's great. So what I loved about this book is Leah's character, because I have never identified with a character this strongly before, in terms of like I see myself in her, just in her like personality. I just feel like when she's thinking, she's thinking exactly what I would think. So it's like, oh wow, this is like my equivalent. If I was a character, I feel like I would be Leah, maybe a little less pragmatic, is that the word? Like, I think I exude emotion a little bit more than she does. Um, and I definitely like overthink things a little bit more than she does, but definitely her tendencies and her motivations are me basically so it was really cool to read a story about me it felt like but it wasn't but you know um because she is 29 too so it's close-ish to my age because i'm 27 so anyways <laughs> other than that i also loved the book because um she's a high school teacher i'm a teacher you know it's just like wow but her relationship like the the progression of this relationship was fascinating to watch it, it went, it just, it was good. It was really good. I, I can't, I don't want to spoil anything. So on top of the romance, there was also like a little mystery going on that Leah was kind of figuring out for herself. And I felt like that was really interesting. And there's a little bit of like doctor talk because one of the characters is a doctor. And I find that really interesting to read about. I, I like reading about like medical stories. So yeah, I love this book, five stars. Loved it. This series is so good. I can't wait to read the rest of the books. The next book is going to be so interesting because it's following a character that is very mysterious. He appears like a little, little bit in this book, but other than that, I don't know anything about him and I'm so curious to see who he is, who his love interest is going to be, which I have a theory about that. And yeah, I'm excited. So anyways, that was awesome. Such a good 
book to read this month. Um, okay, and then I have a little surprise for myself and for you guys if you care. Uh, so look at this book, Love and a Little White Lie. I literally talked about this book in my last video. I had checked this out from the library. This is a different copy. Um, the one that I had from the library was the big print or large print version and the hardcover version. So it looks completely different. It's orange literally that same day or maybe it was the next day. The next day I went to my local Christian bookstore. It's so, I'm so blessed that I have a, an actual Christian bookstore near me. So they sometimes have a sales section. And this book was literally in the sales section. And when I saw it, I was like, thank you, God. Like I had just finished reading this and it's one of my new favorite books of all time. And so the fact that I can own it right now and like, I literally want to read it again right now. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, this is Love and a Little White Lie by Tammy L. Gray. If you remember, I read My Hope Next Door by this author a couple months ago and loved it. Also one of my new favorite books and really, Tammy L. Gray is a new favorite author for me. Um, I'm so impressed. She writes captivating stories that are just so consumable. Her characters and the the wit and like the dialogue and then the faith in Jesus, like it's so good, everything about it. So this book follows a girl who is out of a bad relationship. She's a recent breakup. It's devastated her. It took everything from her. She is broke and she's devastated. And so she grew up with a mom who hates religion and she's always kind of like made fun of it. But she has an aunt, her mom's sister, who is a Christian and she offers for her to come and stay on her property. She has like a little cabin to like recuperate. And then she is also gonna be getting a job at the church her aunt goes to. And so she's like, sure, I mean, I'll just pretend that I'm a Christian and get this job because I need money and it'll be fine. And the story goes from there. There is a romance. Once again, kind of a love triangle. I love it. And it just takes you on a ride. And I loved every second. And it's really, I loved this character, this girl, her name's January. I just appreciated her. She had such a good heart and she was so honest about what she believes and her doubts. And I just, I just appreciated it. And I, I thought that every moment of her kind of testing the waters of faith, it just felt so real. Even the things that didn't go perfect, it felt real. And I, I just loved it. And so anyways, I would highly recommend this book. I'm so thankful that I own it. I literally, I'm gonna read it again because I, I loved it. I'm just gonna read my favorite parts. Yeah, it's great, so. <laughs> okay, and then really quick, I threw this one in in the last second. I read Chance of Loving You. Um, this is a novella bind up with three short stories by Terry Blackstock, Candace Calvert, and Susan May Warren. I read this book for the first time last year through my library and I loved it. Um, these stories are so cute and funny. They just hit the spot. They're, they're really good. Um, Terry Blackstocks is my favorite. I had put this on my Amazon wish list, and I don't put my Amazon wish list link in all of my videos. It's in some. Yeah. Um, but anyways, one of my subscribers sent this to me. So yeah, now I have it and I'm so thankful and I read it because I know I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for sending that to me. And I did read it and I still love it. It's so good. Um, so if you just need like a happy pick me up, easy book to read, would definitely recommend this book. Um, it's so cute. And yeah, they're all romances, which is fun. So yeah, those are all of the books that I read in June. So not a lot, but some really, really good ones. So that's all that I can ask for. And I am ready for July, feels good. Um, I am officially done work now. Um, it is June 30th that I'm filming this and I went to work for the last time of this school year today and um, it's crazy. I can't believe that we're here. I'm so thankful. So yeah, have a great day, you guys. Thank you for watching this. I'll write all of the books down below with the authors and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. And I feel like I'm talking on and on, but that's okay. This, yeah. Uh, what else can I say?